Hi guys, today we're going to be listening to Lesson 10, Vision, the Parts of the Eye. Our primary focus today is to describe the relationship between the parts of the eye and vision, the parts of the eye, using language that pertains to sequence and cause and effect. Let's look at a few core vocabulary words used in this lesson. You're not expected to be able to use these words immediately, but with repeated exposure throughout the lessons, hopefully you'll acquire a good understanding of most of the words. You may wish to keep these words in a unit dictionary notebook, along with definitions, sentences, and or other writing exercises using these vocabulary words. As always, remember to pause the video if you need to take time to write something down or rewind to rewatch a section. The first word is iris. Iris is dealing with your eye color. Next, we have wondrous. Wondrous means amazing, miraculous, and awesome. Next, we have lens. Lens are the small, flexible part of the eye that focuses light to produce an image. The pupil is a small black opening in the center of the colored part of the eye that controls how much light can enter. And then last we have retina. Retina is a part of the eye that lies along the back inner wall of the eyeball that allows us to see shades of gray and dim light, as well as colors and sharp images in bright light. As we listen to today's story, I want you to listen carefully to find out details about how the eyes work and how vision helps us understand the world around us. Imagine a typical day. You're always looking around at people in books and screens, at animals in cars and trees. Before crossing a street, you look both ways for traffic. What part of your body do you use to look at all of these things? Your eyes, of course. And which body organ do you think helps your eyes to see? Yes, the wondrous brain. Human eyes work together with the brain in order to see. Of all your senses, your sense of sight is the one you use the most. More than half of all the information you collect from your environment is received through your eyes. Then, the information is sent to the back of your brain, sometimes called the mind's eye, where your brain interprets what your eyes see and creates a picture for you. Quick check. What body organ do your eyes work with in order to see? Pause the video to answer. Remember when we looked at the different parts of the skull? The cranium, which houses your brain, is only one part of your skull. Besides the eight flat cranial bones, there are 20 additional skull bones. Some of these bones form the eye sockets, two holes that are the perfect size for housing and protecting your eyeballs. You can feel your eye sockets by gently touching the area around your eyeball. Before we take a look at an eyeball, let's look at what surrounds your eyes. There are other things that also play an important part in helping you to see. So turn and look at your neighbor or somebody else at your house. See the hairs above the eyes? What are they called? Right, the eyebrows. They're not just there to look pretty. They have a purpose. Now. Close your eyes. What is the skin called that covers your eyes? Yes, eyelids. Your eyelids protect your eyes too, keeping them moist by spreading tears over them. Tears are produced by tear glands, located above each eyeball on the underside of the eyelid. These salty water droplets Keep your eyes wet and help fight germs. Tear ducts, tear ducts are tiny raised bumps located in the inner corner of your eyes. 
containing openings no larger than a pinhole. These tiny openings are the drains for your tears. Quick check. What do you think would be you would be doing if your tear ducts couldn't drain a lot of tears fast enough? Pause the video to answer. Your eyelashes, the short curved hairs growing on the edges of your eyelids, keep dust particles out as well. There are muscles all around each eye, six in all. They control your eye's movements allowing them to swivel in their sockets, looking up and down and side to side. Now, we're ready to take a peek at the parts of your eyeball itself. So look at your neighbor again. What shape is his or her eyeball? It may, be, it may appear oval to you, but the eyeball is actually well-named because it is round, just like a basketball. It looks oval because some parts are hidden behind the eyelids. What color were your neighbor's eyes? Did you notice? Look again. Let's find out. Look at this picture together. The outer visible part of the eye includes the sclera, cornea, iris, and pupil. The white outer layer of the eye is called the sclera. The thin, tough, transparent tissue that covers the colored part of the eye is called the cornea, and it allows light to pass through. Together, the sclera and the cornea protect the eye from germs, dangerous particles, and damaging light rays. The colored part of the eye, the disc located just behind the transparent cornea, is called the iris. At the center of the iris is a black circle. Do you see it? This dark circular hole called the pupil varies in size as it regulates the amount of light entering the eye. The muscles on the iris control the size of the pupil, tightening to make the pupil smaller in bright light and relaxing the pupil larger in dim light. Quick check. Which two parts of the eye help protect it from germs, dangerous particles, and damaging light rays? Pause the video to answer. You can see clearly only if the right amount of light enters your eyes. Eyes are designed to focus light. Every part of the eye has a role to play including those parts that lie inside the eyeball. So, what is inside your eyes? Liquid and jelly. That's right, eyes are soft and hollow. The clear fluid and jelly inside them gives them their round shape. There are three important parts inside the eyeballs that help you see. The lens, the retina, and the optic nerve. In order to see, you need light. It can be natural light from the sun or electrical light from a bulb. But all seeing begins with light. The eye sees objects by seeing the light that reflects or bounces off objects. Imagine that you are looking at a house. The sun shines down on the house. Light from the sun bounces off the house and travels to your eyes. Light rays bend toward each other as they pass through the cornea, the transparent tissue that covers the iris. This bending is the first step in focusing the light. The bent light rays then pass through the pupil to a clear disc called the lens. The rubbery, flexible lens adjusts its shape in order to focus on near or distant objects, creating crisp images. As the light rays pass through the lens, they bend even closer, cross one another, and land on the cup-shaped retina at the back of the eye. An image of the house is formed on the retina, but because light rays are bent, the image appears upside down on the retina. 
The light receiving cells of the retina transfer light rays into electrical energy so the nervous system can send information to your brain via the optic nerve. The short, thick optic nerve is fixed to the back of the eyeball, just behind the retina. Acting like a cable, it passes through a tunnel in the skull and connects the eyeball to the brain. The optic nerve carries messages to the brain to be processed. The brain recreates the image so that the house is now seen right side up. As the eyes work together with the nervous system, this whole process takes less than one second to complete. When you think of the factors and parts of the eye that are involved in allowing us to see, it is indeed wondrous to think that it takes less than one second to see. Eyes are so important to us that it is troubling when things go wrong with them, preventing us from seeing as well as we would like. Two of the most common eye problems are nearsightedness and farsightedness. Have you ever heard those terms before? Let's find out what they mean. We know that people come in all shapes and sizes. Look around you. Legs and arms and faces and heads are all different shapes and sizes. So it makes sense that eyes vary in shape and size from person to person, too. The size and shape of the eyes affects its ability to focus light and work well. In perfect vision, as light rays pass through the lens of the eyes, they meet in just the right place to project a clear image on the retina. But sometimes, the cornea, or the lens, is not quite the right shape to bend the light in the most effective way. Sometimes, the shape of the eyeball affects how clearly images are projected on the retina. When these things occur, vision may become blurry. In nearsightedness, the eyeball size in relation to the cornea affects its focusing power, so images are projected or focused in front of the retina. Nearby objects are seen clearly, but distant objects are out of focus. In farsightedness, the eyeball size affects the focusing power of the lens, so images are projected or focused behind the retina. Distant objects are seen clearly, but nearby objects are out of focus. Quick check. Who is farsighted or nearsighted? And what does it mean for you? Pause the video to answer. Luckily, these problems can both be corrected with glasses or contact lenses. Before I go, let's try a riddle or two. I reflect off objects and enter your eyes. I bend to help you see. Your sight depends on me. What am I? Pause the video to answer. Objects appear upside down on me. I live at the back of your eyeball. What am I? Pause the video to answer. I am part of your eye that is colored. Sometimes I'm green, but I could be brown, gray, blue. What am I? Pause the video to answer. Okay, it's time for me to go. Next time, we'll look at the smallest bone in your body. Can anyone predict where it is? Hint, it's part of another sensory organ. You may now have some questions from your teacher. Remember, as always, you can re-watch the video to try to help answer those. Good luck, and I hope you learned something new.